Chapter 3 Aliens That afternoon, I sat on my bed and thought about my first two days of high school. I wanted to know more about Mr. Stone. I decided to go and visit Paul. Paul was in front of his computer. He was very interested in astronomy, the occult, and life on other planets. Hi, Paul. What are you doing? I asked. I'm on the Internet. I'm in contact with the International Space Fan Club. Listen to this. Something very important is happening. A comet is passing through the Virgo constellation. There are the right connections for intergalactic meetings. The Earth has been in the Virgo constellation since last week. But what are intergalactic meetings? I asked. They're voyages of aliens to our planet. These voyages can happen only in special moments. For example, when a constellation and a comet meet. Aliens can travel to our planet for different reasons. Sometimes they want to study us humans. Some people say that aliens may come to Earth to conquer the planet. I looked at Paul with a shocked expression. An idea started to form in my mind. What's wrong, Jenny? Paul asked. Maybe Mr. Stone is an alien, I exclaimed. Gee, aren't you exaggerating? Come on, get real. Well, his voice doesn't seem human. His eyes change color. And, and do you remember the green liquid and the black pills he had for lunch? What do you mean his eyes change color? Paul asked. Didn't you notice? Yesterday they were green. Today they're amber colored, I answered. Even if his eyes change color, I still don't believe he's an alien. But the comet explains everything. It entered the Virgo constellation last week, and Mr. Stone is a new teacher. I talked to Dana's brother, Matt. He said that this is Mr. Stone's first year at Jefferson High. No one knows where he comes from, I said. Maybe... Paul's eyes lit up. Maybe that's why he asked us all those personal questions. He wants to study us. Yes, you see? All clues indicate that he is an alien. So what can we do? I asked. We can spy on him. Maybe we can follow him to his house. We can see where he lives and what he does at home. However, we must be very careful. He doesn't seem to have emotions. He might get angry if he discovers we suspect him. We'll try to follow him tomorrow, after school. Okay, said Paul. The next morning before school, I took Fred out for a walk in the park. Fred needs daily exercise, so my parents and I take turns walking the dog. The park was empty. It was dawn. A lonely bird chirped in the trees. The grass was wet with dew. There was peace all around. Suddenly, I noticed something or someone moving behind the bushes. I got closer to see who or what it was. In the clearing, there was a man. He was looking up, and his arms were raised. He bent down and touched the ground. Then he stood straight again, face and hands again directed to the sky. After about a minute, he turned around. It was Mr. Stone. Was he communicating with the universe? With his planet? Was he really an alien? I quickly walked away. Fortunately, Fred didn't bark. I took my dog home and then met Dana. We walked to school. I wanted to tell her about Mr. Stone, but I didn't. It was too difficult. Besides, I couldn't tell her about the afternoon plan because it was too dangerous for three people to follow the teacher. During the morning, I thought about Mr. Stone again and again. I was scared, but also excited. Chapter 4 Too Much Imagination? When the science class started, Mr. Adams walked in. Come on, boys and girls. Today we're going to the science laboratory, he announced. In our lab, there are some white mice and some hamsters in cages. As Mr. Adams passed by their cages, they started to squeal loudly. They were very agitated. Mr. Adams laughed. <laughs> What's wrong? He said, speaking to the animals. I won't eat you. Then he gave us some worms. You must cut them into little pieces. 
The pieces can live and move independently, he said. I looked at my worm. It was pale and slimy. I didn't want to cut it up. Jennifer, are you afraid of cutting up your worm? I looked up. Mr. Adams was at my desk. He smiled down at me. Give me your knife. I thanked him and gave it to him. His arm touched mine. It tickled. An electric shock ran through me and I jumped. What's wrong? Asked Mr. Adams. He seemed frightened. Nothing, I answered, trying to smile. He helped me cut up my worm, then walked away. No one else in class had noticed anything. I didn't know what to think. Were all my teachers weird, or was I just too imaginative? I wrote a note to Paul and told him what had happened. Paul, I whispered. Paul turned and looked at me. I passed the note. Excuse me, what are you doing? Paul, what do you have in your hand? Asked Mr. Adams. His voice made me freeze. We were in very big trouble. <laughs> Not nothing, said Paul. Please listen to the lesson. If I see you again, you must give me the note. I'm sorry, answered Paul. Phew, I was so happy that I wanted to laugh. Obviously, I didn't. When the bell rang, Mr. Adams called me to his desk. Oh, no, I thought. He smiled. I'm sorry I scared you. Two years ago, I had an accident. My left arm is artificial. It's an electric prosthesis, and sometimes it can give、uh, electric shocks. He seemed a little embarrassed. I was surprised and sorry. He was so sweet. I thanked him and went to lunch. Paul, forget what I wrote, I said as I sat down at our usual lunch table. I told Paul and Dana about Mr. Adams' electric prosthesis. Then Dana mentioned Mr. Stone. Paul and I looked at each other, but we didn't say anything. Besides, after school, Dana had a dance club meeting in the gym, so Paul and I were free. We finished our chocolate milk and went out to recess. At the door, we met Mr. Stone. His head was down. He seemed deep in thought. Hi, Dana said to him.、Uh, um, hi, he said, surprised, lifting his head. His eyes were green again. Wow, that Mr. Stone is really a mystery, Dana exclaimed. I still didn't want to tell Dana the whole story, so I changed the subject. Fortunately, the bell interrupted us. Before entering class at one o'clock, I took Paul aside. I quickly told him about what I had seen in the park. Wow. I wonder what we'll see this afternoon," remarked Paul. 